Hey, welcome back everybody. So I found a corner that's quiet here. Recently I did a, a video about checking main and rod bearing clearances on the engine. And I made a comment on that video and I said plastic gauge should not be used. And I, I want to clarify that because boy did I get a lot of backlash on that. The viewers didn't really like the fact that I was dissing plastic gauge. So I think I should clarify that. If you're doing oil clearances, the most accurate way to do it is with measuring tools like you saw in the video that I released recently. That is definitely the most accurate way. The issue with plastic gauge is you don't get as accurate of a measurement because it'll give you two thousandths or three thousandths. You don't really get 0 .00 two, three, or 0 .0027. So it doesn't go down to the 10 thousandths place. Now, what I would say is that if you don't have measuring tools and plastic gauge is the only thing that is available to you, go ahead and do it. In this video, you're gonna see that I actually used plastic gauge on an engine that I did. And the reason I did that is because basically I just wanted to demonstrate it. I wasn't saying don't ever use plastic gauge under any circumstances. What I would say, the way that I would clarify it is I would say the best way to check oil clearances is with precision measuring tools. However, if you do not have the availability of those tools and you're putting something together, I would say that plastic gauge is a great quick check and it is better than just throwing the dice and guessing. I hope that makes sense to you. And I wanna get into this video because I actually demonstrate how to use plastic gauge and it can be an effective tool, especially if you're not doing an extreme high performance engine. If you're just doing a basically a stock engine or you're refreshing up an engine or you have an engine and you wanna verify say it's a used engine, you want to verify that your bearing clearances are <clears throat> in a range that's acceptable to where you don't have to pull the crank and grind it. I've done that many, many times. One of the benefits of plastic gauge is if you got the car up in the air, you can pull the pan and you can plastic gauge that. If the crankshaft is installed in the engine, it's very hard to get a measuring tool on that crankshaft. In fact, on the mains, you can't. And on the rods, you have to disconnect the rod and push the rod up out of the way. So plastic gauge can be an effective tool for a quick check, or if you're doing a low performance refresh, it's better than no measurement at all. In fact, it's way better than no measurement at all. No measurement at all is terrible. So, all right, so here we go, plastic gauge. Now, the one thing that we do wanna do is we wanna check our oil clearances. And to check our oil clearances, a lot of times we'll use a bore gauge and a micrometer. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the crankshaft in and I'm gonna show you how the plastic gauge, uh, plastic gauge is a quick check. It's not as accurate as measuring tools, but it does work. It is, it, it does give you a good idea of where you're at. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the crank in and we'll start plastic gauging these mains. All right, so, the next step, I guess, I don't normally lay this over, but I want to get this on camera. Our next step is to lay the crank in here. Now, you don't really want to lay the crank on totally dry bearings, but for the plastic gauge process, we don't want a bunch of heavy oil on here. So just put a little dab of WD-40 on, on the upper bearings. The block's upside down right now. And then we can lay our crank in here. So our crank is clean, and we're just gonna very gently lay our crank onto those bearings with a light coating of oil. Okay, so there we go. So now, the next thing I, I wanna mention here is the plastic gauge I talked about. I found plastic gauge at AutoZone. Now there's, there's, this package comes with two different colors, and it's different size ranges. Our size range is gonna be that green plastic gauge. And um, I want to show you this. Take the green stuff out. If you open this package up and you look at that plastic gauge, it, it basically looks like a little piece of green string. 
Now, the way that this works is you, you take a piece of that plastic gauge and you lay it across the bearing and then you torque your cap on and it's gonna squish this plastic gauge. Once you squish it, you pull the bearing back, uh, the cap back off, and then you just compare the width of that plastic gauge. It gives you the range here, and it has a metric and it has standard. We're gonna use standard, and it compares the range, and whatever width that plastic gauge is, that's your, in the ballpark of your clearance. So we're gonna do one of these, and I'll show you how we do it. So we have our crankshaft in here. We're gonna go ahead and do this metal one. So if you take a look here, I've just laid a piece of that piece of that plastic gauge across there. And this is our number three cap. So you want to take your respective cap that goes on there. Now, one thing that's really important is you got to make sure that you don't rotate this crank at all when you do this. So we're going to put our cap on very carefully. And we're just going to let it sit right over that plastic gauge. Now again, when you put your caps on, you have to seat them, so just tap on that cap, make sure it's flush, and then you're gonna run your bolts down, and you have to torque these bolts to spec. Okay, so I ran the bolts down off camera, I torqued them to 65 foot-pounds, and then again, make sure you don't turn the crank here at all. So we're just gonna loosen our bolts up, and once we get those loose, we're gonna pull that cap off. You know, we've got all our bolts out. I like to leave one bolt in and just kind of tap on it to break that cap loose like that. So we'll take our cap off and you can see there's an imprint there. It shows us how much that plastic gauge was squished. So now if we take a look, you can, you can measure it on the crankshaft here or you can measure it on the bearing. We got a really good imprint on the bearing here. So I'm just gonna measure it here, and if I take a look, I just compare which width matches that, and we're really close there to two thousandths. If I go to one and a half, it doesn't match. The one and a half is a lot wider. We go over here, that is our two thousandths right there and we're right at two thousandths which is really good that's exactly where we need to be so this tells me that these are these bearings these one under bearings are really gonna really uh, the right choice for this now you want to go ahead and plastic gauge all of them to make sure they're all even that in a nutshell is plastic gauge and it will re really get you in the ballpark now you know, full disclosure, I have already plastic gauged all of the mains on this, and also we're gonna do the same thing on the rods with each connecting rod to make sure it's right. It's a little bit time consuming, but man, I mean, I realize we're doing this on the tailgate, but you really can't take any chances with your oil clearances. If, if you're, you're doing this without precision measuring tools, and even if you have precision measuring tools, you have to measure each journal to make sure everything's right. So. These all came out around 2000s on all the mains, which we're happy with. So because of that, we can go ahead and put the crank in and torque it up. I am not gonna demonstrate plastic gauge on the rods, even though I'm gonna do all of them. I don't think you really need to see it. It's the same process. You put the connecting rod on, you torque the bearing cap on the connecting rod, you pull it off, compare the width, we're expecting about one and a half to two thousandths on the rods on this one. And um, if I have any problems with that, I'll let you know. Otherwise, we're just gonna go ahead and put this thing together.